Hey, welcome into the podcast. Welcome to the Counter Show. It just happens to also be the year-end closeout event, the December to Remember show. Hey. Hey, everybody. Does that does that just make you want to buy a car or what? You want to no? go buy a car? You want, you want to go buy a car, don't you? We got... We got a little... Yeah, we got side little, shots sitting in with us got today. got side shot guests, so... December to remember, guys. Oh, that's what it makes year, me want to buy. It makes me want to buy some PCG gear. Year year in blowout. Year in blowout, guys. You got to go to our website and uh, reach out to us if you want these. Uh, you got to send a comment in. There's a ask Those us a question uh, tab on partscounterguru.com, and you can uh, type in your type in your request there. What do we have, Jay? We got we got beanies. We got. Uh, trucker got beanies, caps, we golf got caps. trucker hats, ball caps. Um, we can get some hoodies. They're, the hoodies are around 45 or so each. The hats are about 28 bucks a piece, and these beanies are about 25 bucks a piece. So, what about bathrobes? But, we got any of those? Man, we can uh, we can work on that. We can work on that. You you send send us a robe uh, or a link to the robe that you want to have the logo put on, and we'll get that logo put on for you. Hey, if you could so have you anything, one thing, clothing. With the Parts Counter Guru logo on it, what would you want it to be? You need to get back to me on that. You know, think about it. All right, you interrupt me when you're ready. <laughs> a so mask. you know we a what a mask. <laughs> a, a mask. Oh, do we have okay. those? Uh, actually, I have a couple prototypes. Hang on, hang on. Let me call the R and D department. Hold on. Hey, <laughs> right, Jay, right. What's your right. number? <laughs> <laughs> right on right, right okay. on all right yeah so yeah so so you know speaking of the the year end close out of it in december to remember man isn't it funny i mean this is you see all these auto ads you know like oh it's over the top so thank you for the saturday night live link we made we, side shot and i just sat here and watched that video hilarious we got a link to this from our website if you haven't seen it yet saturday night live does a parody of the lexus december to remember which yeah yeah Jay, Jay how did you find that you're just out there googling I was out there looking for just you know typical commercials like local news affiliates because you know like the Daryl Walter one if you don't see my star yeah. on your car you better call ODW but um you know that sort of stuff and and so I was looking for and what was the other guy that was out in Lebanon Tennessee Lebanon well we'll trade for anything that don't eat yeah or something like that. I don't remember I I remember the commercials but i don't remember the guy's name which actually probably means they didn't do a very good job on marketing, right? <laughs> right well it was actually pretty funny but we, i used to love watching it but no i i was just kind of searching for commercials and um this one popped up and it's like it's so funny because we were talking about this yesterday the realistic side of buying a vehicle around christmas time and this parody is so it's so great well, man it, and and interestingly jay even though you were out there searching for local dealership stuff the uh, AI algorithms in Google knew what to put in front of you. That's because they were listening. So we're going to get to that in, in a few minutes, right? Um, yeah, more, we're going to be talking a little. Yeah. More on the Google talk, stuff. More on the Google stuff. We're going to be talking. Uh, our main topic today, though, is, uh, you know, automotive, automobile safety. Um, you know, some of the. Some of the technology that's going into the vehicles out there today that. Um, claim to be working well um but maybe not uh thank goodness for crash test dummies that's all we have to say um, so we, about that we named this in a working uh kind of name that may not stick we may not like release this show under this name but we called it driving over dummies and side shot found the video and sent it to me and then i sent it to yeah. jay and it's various automotive manufacturers, and they're literally. <laughs> it's a. Did you not just laugh when you saw? Okay. Oh. Right? And I watched the whole thing twice. Uh, it's pretty just funny. to see if it's I'm. It's it, not it is supposed funny. Supposed to be entertaining, but some of those dummies got. Uh, <laughs> they got hammered, this, and we're going to reveal. This What's that? Was about two years ago. Yeah. So it may have gotten a little better, but it's it's not old. Uh yeah right right. So there you have it. So Sideshot came up with the idea. Um, he was talking to his dad about it, and uh, Keith decides to say, "Hey, what do you think?" And I'm like, "Let's talk about it because is, there's a there's a there's a key to this that we're going to talk about." And the word of the day is distractions. 
Word so, of the day, distractions. Hey, what? I was going to say something I f- forgot. What were we talking about? <laughs> you ah, sound you like see what me. I did there? Yes, I did. Um, so, so uh, I seriously just got distracted. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. So I they literally just, that. I just have to, <laughs> I just, we come up with these topics. I just walk through my living room and look at what, what he's playing on the screens. And I'm like, oh, that'd be a good, you know, idea for a podcast. Side shot's been a um a source of um of inspiration for us on many episodes. So thank you for your hard work that you put into it as an official uh parts counter guru counter show researcher. Um I'll get you a badge st- for that. Stuff going on behind the a scenes, sticker. folks, is something else, man. We're 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 uh we are we are tapping into the minds of the future. So we're gonna be ahead of the curve. So, uh, do we do, you ready to do some news? We're going to get into some news live from the counter show. News. All right. So, (laughs) um, we've got a lot of stories here. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a pick it how you want to pick it, but, um, we, we did a podcast recently um you may have watched it over on our youtube channel and for those of you who don't know that we have a youtube channel you can go to youtube.com forward slash parts counter gurus subscribe while you're there and you can see segments of our podcast over there video segments of that and we did one recently about the movies the movie industry and keith i'm going to let you take this story because you 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 are the bigger movie buff than i am but you know obviously the the theater industry is just absolutely just having a heck of a time during during covid yeah so so you know it and by the way if you haven't listened to that um podcast and we put the video out too i think jay we called it what movies in 2020 movies in 2020 you got it sir um you know this is this is a little bit of a i'd say i told you so uh, from us, because we kind of called this. Now, I, I didn't know this, but apparently Regal Cinemas shut down all the Back in theaters. October? Yeah, in October. Now, they, yeah. they have a big car show at the th- at the cinema, cinema lot where we, close to us, you know the one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and that's still going on. But, uh, you know, War- Warner, I think it was Warner Brothers, uh, their film studio came out and made a deal with HBO Max recently and just said... Right. We're going to simultaneously premiere all of our slated movie releases for 2021 on HBO Max for like the first month and at theaters. And the the thinking there is, uh, yes, there's a coronavirus vaccine out right now. It's in circulation. They're trying to get it, uh, you know, mass produced. But things aren't going to, finger quotes, go back to normal for quite a while. And it's going to take a while for all of those efforts to kind of normalize things. So right. my point is theaters aren't going to be back at full capacity like for a good, good while. And yeah, it'll probably be, what, late next year at the earliest yeah. before we'll, we'll see and see you, these. And that's if they come back. And I mean, you're you just not going to – you're not going to so, – so two things have been working against theaters – they, they mm-hmm. can't sell to capacity. And a lot That's of them right. on opening weekends, we used to go and they would be full. Um, right. And then you've got, and we did this, uh, I think, on, on that previous podcast. You've got all the major releases pushing back going, no, we're not going to release them uh, right now because we need to recoup our you know $100 million budget or whatever it was. So things like the Top Gun sequel and Marvel's Black Widow and and on and on and on. The on, James on. Bond. James yeah, Bond, the new. Right? Yep. And so AMC and Re, uh, Regal, they're, they've got no draw. They've got no blockbuster, what do they call them, tentpole movies to put out there right. to draw people in. So, yeah, it's not a good situation for them. Um, and I want to I wanna throw an interesting slant at this just because never, never, I never let a good opportunity to take a dig at Apple. Uh, go mm-hmm. and uh, look we're using Apple equipment you, you get you guys before you jump on my case my first com- my first adult computer was a PowerBook 145B that I bought in college I had a Commodore 64 when I was a kid but 
Uh, I bought that, paid for it with my own money, have had Macs ever since. I'm just really disappointed in the lack of innovation in the past five or six years. So, so if you read Steve Jobs' biography, um, which came out six or seven years ago, there's a pretty good amount of time in that devoted in that biography to his efforts with iTunes, bringing right. iTunes to reality, convincing the record labels to sign. None of them wanted to do it at first. Now you'd be silly not to, but that wasn't always the case. You know, people didn't know the capability of things like iPods back then. And so here we have, you know, back then Jobs was kind of a pioneer. Apple didn't have that brand recognition that they have today. It was a risk, right? Uh, Microsoft was the bigger player. But, but here you have Apple who, Jay, if Apple approached you tomorrow mm -hmm. um, and you're, you know, anybody, right? If you're Warner Brothers or you're Marvel Studios, would you be like, uh, we'll have to think about it. I mean, you'd take it seriously, right? Oh, absolutely would, especially with the success of iTunes. I mean, let's everybody said that that wouldn't work and being and as a, as a person who was a vocalist and you know, I I recorded in studios and that dream of putting an album out and that sort of stuff. You want to sell the album, make money. And then you had what was it, the Napster thing going on and then, you know, iTunes right. comes in and saves right. the day basically and which is great and everybody said it wouldn't work, but <laughs> Yeah. Do you? I mean, who goes out and buys a CD per se well, anymore? It's just, Everybody, yeah, it's streams right. it's it, changed downloads the industry. it. So here it you have it. a hardware yeah. company in Apple who's trying more and more to be a services company, mm -hmm. having an opportunity literally put right in front of them because they now have their own TV network or right. whatever you want to call that media outlet. Apple TV Plus. You talking about? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. they've got, got a free subscription with my new MacBook. They could make a home theater type experience with mm -hmm. their hardware innovation. They could partner with the movie industry for release on their products. Hey, Apple, if you want to move into the service industry, that's how you do it. Absolutely. But it requires creative thinking and innovation mm -hmm. instead of just releasing noise-canceling headphones that everybody else has been doing for 15 years. I mean, uh, and, I and, just, you know. And not only that, they're, you know, they're in the process of these new chips uh, yeah. The M1 chips coming out, and that is really, really upsetting the Apple cart right now in the in the in the um, the world of of uh, that. And um, you know, and again, it didn't it didn't work back then with their own chips. We'll see where that goes, but um, I wish them luck. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Apple should be poised to be able to step in and kind of. I mean, if not them, who, you know, why who not? better? Right? Who better? They, and and they could do it, and they could release right. a product, and they could. I mean, mm. we all still want to watch blockbuster movies, right? Did, would you would you by chance foresee, you know, the feds jumping in here and bailing out the the industry Ooh. at all, like they did the automotive industry? Um, I mean, is that is it that viable of a of a of a revenue for? Um, you know, that's an for interesting the country, for the world. Uh, you know, there's a lot of jobs if you look at those movie credits. Sure. You know, yeah. pages and yeah. pages and, you know, minutes and minutes Grips of scrolling. Grips and gaffers and I, people you know, who feed. You I know guess I mean? as long as we don't get, you know, Tom Cruise and 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 Daniel Craig taking ba PPP bailout money or whatever. You know, because that, that's the problem we had with the, the first round of this whole PPP thing is we're finding out now that people like Tom Brady started companies and got PPP loans. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah with mean, the boat. It, it could potentially happen. You know, it could. It could. One thing um, is for certain, if it does happen, I'm going back to this clip and playing it. <laughs> right, man. Look, uh, just to kind of give you guys a perspective out there listening, um, you know, movie theaters attendance is down nearly 95 percent. Yeah. Since since like November of of um, 2019. For obvious reasons, that's a big deal, guys. I mean, you take ninety five percent of your your revenue away. Um, that's you know what else can they do? You're ten, right? You, know? so you have to say yes. Yeah. Can't hear you shaking your head. Okay, so what's the last movie you remember going to see at the theater? Just that you remember. First one that comes to mind. Spies in disguise. Spies in disguise. Do you miss? Um, do you miss going? You, you want to go back to the theaters? Like, if, if Apple came out with a product that you could have that theater experience at home, 
you were just talking about like, you know, virtual classroom with Jay before we started. You think it would be the same or would you still want to go to the theater? Um, I think it would be pretty close to the same. It may not be like, you know, exactly the same. Yeah. But I think it I think it would be pretty close. Did you, you di- then you just bring your friends over and you have your own theater. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Why? Why not? I have. I have some family, man. That that's what they did. They took an entire room in their house, and I mean, this thing is like, like walking into a regal cinema. It really is. They've got popcorn makers. You know, they got Coke machines in there. It's a real deal experience, man. Right. And they've got the nice surround sound and the curtains and the whole nine yards. So pretty fun. So. Hey, let's hope that our that our industry that industry comes back, and and I, I hope that for a lot of the actors out there, um, you know, I we need to probably have Marlon on our good friend yeah. Marlon Young, uh, who we've had on a on a, on a previous podcast, who is a, an actor, um, and see how the industry is uh, treating him right now. Um, Be a good I, follow st- up. Yeah, it would be. We should just get him on. So we'll we'll keep that in mind. So. So let's uh, let's roll into the next one. I've got one here. Um, I wanted to talk about <laughs> yeah, more news. So it seems like we just can't stop talking about EVs, um, and not only just like the personal vehicle, you know, like your Tesla Model S or whatever, and then the Hummer coming out, and then the Mach E, and all this sort of stuff. But you know, big players in the um, commercial side of 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 uh, many industries, you know, such as you know the short haul, uh, long haul, inner city hauling, those sorts of things. So Mercedes, we're all very familiar with the uh, Sprinter vans, those diesel vans. We talked about those, Keith, on many occasions. Uh, even in the most recent podcast we did about the RVs, the Winnebago live reveal. Uh, we talked about that. They're mainly running their diesel engines, but um, there is an all-electric e-sprinter delivery van um, that is likely to be delivered to the U.S., uh, say, 2023, 2024, they're saying. Um, the next-generation uh, Mercedes-Benz e-sprinter will be built around a new electric versatility platform. Um Mercedes has spent around four hundred and twenty-five million dollars uh, on this plat- these platforms, and they uh, the new platform is divided into three modules. Front module that holds the high voltage controller in space, usually occupied by the engine, um, an underfloor module for the battery, and a rear module that houses the motor and drive axle. That platform will be available in two wheelbase links and is designed to underpin a variety of Sprinter variants, including a flatbed cargo passenger truck and an ambulance which they like to call the krankenwagen so i mean uh, seriously man is that their their ambulance platform and they're calling it the krankenwagen yeah it's, that's what they look, call it look, man the krankenwagen right that's right there in the article i'm not making this up yeah kranken krankenwagen i even went and checked it out for the the proper you, pronunciation you gotta be kidding me come on no no so uh the krankenwagen um will be available uh you know maybe in the u.s I, I looked into it a little bit and not all of their platforms will be here but they did say that the delivery van as well as the um the krankenwagen the ambulance version would be but see they have flatbed trucks mm-hmm. over there that are evs that they're they're going to be using this as well so it's you know the, these guys and was it Bollinger is another one that's out there. They're out of Michigan um, that has developed some commercial platforms. They're 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 heavy in the. It's all EV. I mean the the EV world. It, it's here. It's just a matter of getting all these things out there and available to you. And obviously the biggest hurdle that they're having with any of these, and they even speak to this in this article, it's range. Yeah, 100. Um, Ford's uh, Transit van, it looks like they're talking, when that comes out, it's going to have a 126-mile range, which... That's right, yeah. You know, you, you're using them for local delivery, but, Jay, I don't think... I mean, if you just drove a delivery van around town all day, I would bet you're doing more than 100 miles. Oh, absolutely you are. Um, I mean, in a if you're in an in a inner city... Um, for sure you are, um, you know, especially places like, I mean, let's just give it, you know, sprawling, big sprawling cities like Chicago or New York. Yeah. I mean, they're all over the place and obviously they, they 
they zip code those out and yeah, they they're not their, going to each one. Yeah. But those are large areas, man. Um, so let's just hope, man, that they um, that they're on board too and they can get these out there. Let's just hope that Amazon doesn't drop it off at the wrong address. So and we'll uh, see what happens when they deliver. Uh, so you know, I think uh, I think that um, this might be another one of your examples of live polling where you talked about like they're kind of putting them out there they've got the technology already for the ev platforms you know especially in ford's case let's just make this van and see if anybody buys it right well i mean the gas look when the ford transit came out honestly that small of a vehicle i looked at it and i went you know what this is brilliant oh really no it's i'm yeah it's brilliant there's because in a city when you're dealing with small businesses keith yeah um who don't really have the funds, the capital to go out and buy these big, huge fleets, but they do need some delivery vehicles, but they can't go out and say, hire a commercial, commercially licensed, you know, individual to drive these big vans and stuff like that. What do you do? You go buy these little transit vans like florists, you know, or food deliveries and, or, you know, just or like if let's say you're delivering um, blood, plasma, whatever, right. because there are those services that do that that do not require these big, you know, uh, P30 size vans that right, are sure. on these long wheelbases and chassis. So it kind of makes it. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, not every company's and, UPS. It makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, you target those companies with those bigger vans, but um, for your inner city people uh that are de- delivering um i thought it was like i said your electric companies your you know uh ut- your utility companies period it's a, just a great great little thing i thought it was brilliant i mean the s est- if there's any proof that small utilitarian type vehicles work well in the fleet business just go ask gm about the s10 yeah i mean that s10 i mean your- you go Basically, the modern mail, mail, mail truck, yeah, the mail van, whatever you want to call it, delivery, Ab- absolutely, yeah, U.S. mail, yeah, yeah. That's what yep. they're absolutely, or Dakota man, it's, it's, or whatever, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, I, I think that um, these are going to be a big hit inner city, but they've got to figure out, they got to have that infrastructure to be able to charge these things, and they really have a long way to go in regards to range. If they can get that range figured out, and I think we're there, I think we're probably two, three years away from. From major developments there, man. What That's just my opinion. Good to see. You excited about it? Think it'd be cool? Yeah. Just because it's electric? Um. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, that's like a big advancement, so. Yeah, it's a big change. If they could do that, yeah. that would be pretty cool. Where are they going to plug all these things in? Yeah. Something to think yeah. about. It's a good, it's a good question. All it right. really is. Uh, we'll, so you just call them out, man. We'll we'll jump on them. What well, do you want to do? You want to talk about the uh, the merger merger? Okay, so here's how this works. Everybody takes a turn t- talking about a talking about a news story. So uh, it's your turn. You ready? Look at how did you see the look that I just got? He's like, huh? oh, you put him put him I on just, the spot. I just got a huh huh. Yeah. All right, but you can chime in on this. So uh, first of all, I'm I'm gonna ask side shot here. Did you know that Fiat Chrysler was about to merge? Did you know that? With what? Um, well, I can show you, but it's 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 a conglomerate. It's a group of owners, okay, and they are all coming together, and they're coming together under the name Stellantis. And so, if you look, um, here is the list of the future owners, that, meaning that they are not yet an owner of the car of Fiat Chrysler. So 14.7% is Exor. That's a company. 6.8% is the French state. 6.8% Peugeot family. Honestly, what's the difference mm-hmm. there? Right. Uh, 4.5% Dongfang Motor Group. That's Chinese, I believe. It is. Uh, 2.4% Tiger Global. 1.6% UBS Securities. And 0.96% Vanguard Group. So, yeah. Um, now, the, 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 I feel so bad for these Chrysler fans because for my entire lifetime, this automotive company has just been sold one, just, just, just like every other year, There's this thing's up for sale. Does it not feel that way to you, Jay? It, it does. Um, I, you know, you wonder having a bigger group 
what what is the major benefit? Is it a revenue benefit or is it a technology shared technology benefit? Is there what's in the agreement with these mergers? Are they well, you know, because that's the key. If you're going to survive in the automotive industry, you better have breaking edge technology different than your competitors. You yeah, know? and I mean, I remember the last time there was a merger, which became FCA. Right. Yeah, uh, Chrysler took a bailout from from the U.S. government, mm-hmm. and as part yep. of that, I believe they were strongly encouraged to go through with this merger. Yeah. And they it it was heavily centered around fleet mileage, so they were going to be able to sm- sell smaller cars like these Fiats that mm-hmm. would get better gas mileage, and that would lower the overall fleet mileage of the entire brand. And right. You know, the problem I think when I look at this, the challenge that they're going to have under this Stellantis is. Man, this is so different. I mean, it's like it's not even like Coca Cola partnering with like Sprite. It's like y- you've got a company that's selling just polar opposites in, in vehicles types that people. Are, I mean, here, so you've got Alfa Romeo, Fiat, yeah. Abarth, Lancia, Maserati, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Citroen. I mean, honestly, Citroen and Ram yeah. and Jeep under the same umbrella. They just uh, don't. It just. It's just kind of a weird feeling. Yeah. For that. Opal, and if, Peugeot. Peugeot has just been the laughing stock of. Ah, uh, uh, they just have not. Again, we we don't know all the details of of what what what's going to happen here. We just know that there is a it is a merger within a merger, basically. Yeah. And, um, sadly, Jeep and Ram, of those four you know on the chrysler dodge side have done really really well in the last what four or five years yeah well basically since the economy has been be- better than yeah the, than the americans buy bigger well, cars they, but see this is a european model people don't like big giant suvs over in europe they and they and they won't have that over there i mean it, it you know th- that's not going to be that won't be part of that market i mean i lived in europe and i can tell you that it just won't work because they really their, don't have their, their the infrastructure, infrastructure yeah, exactly. to, to handle it. I remember when I was there and some of the uh, local folk, some of the airmen that I served with there, would ha- they had their vehicles shipped over. And I'm not talking like Pintos, man. We're talking like Cadillacs yeah. and like... You know, Buick Electric 225s, you know, Deuce and a Quarter, these big, huge, like, tanks. And they, they referred to them as Yank tanks. Right. And most of the roads down there to, you know, that, that were there where we traveled on were one track roads. So imagine that's why the Mini Cooper was so popular in, over there in England because you could pass each other easily. You know, it was no problem. Uh, but try getting past a uh, a Cadillac Eldorado or a, or a Coupe de Ville, you know, on one of those one track roads, and that happens. So, I, I they're they're not marketing to those guys those particular vehicles, and that's why I would have a concern if I am part of the family, the Chrysler Group over there, because where where does that rank those guys? Um, amongst you know the big three in the U.S., which is obviously Chrysler, you know GM and and Ford. So where does that rank them? Now you are familiar with most of these car brands. I see it. Hang on one second. You're familiar with most of those car brands. What do you think about this? Do you think this is a good idea? How do you think this is going to go? You think it's going to go well? That looks very confusing, and it doesn't look like a good idea at all. All right. Well, so we're all Okay, you heard it here it. first. You heard it here first, guys. I mean, Sideshot called it, and I'm telling you, I I'm, I I have to I have to believe him. I think he's correct and he he does his homework. Stellantis, we wish you the best. Uh but yes. man, I you got you got a you got a mountain to climb. Uh so you yeah, you really hey, really do. If you need a water break, go grab a water break. Would you mind uh rejoining us here when we get to the main topic cuz I think you're going to have some interesting things to say about that. So head on back when you can, okay? All right. I got your I got your I got your cans, as they say. I'll keep an eye on them for you. <laughs> I, I think I might. I might have to hold the fort down on my own for a few minutes, Jay. That's that's cool. Um, so yeah, Stellantis. There you have it. There you have it, guys. Um, all right. So we're going to move on into uh, some other news here, real quick. Um, 
this is kind of interesting. And I know it's. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was so manipulating. You guys are, you know, on the same day, and this is so sad, man. What? Um, the uh, the big, big, huge telescope down in Puerto Rico. Um, what do they call it? The uh, Arecibo Observatory. It was uh-huh. a colossal, colossal radio telescope in Puerto Rico. It collapsed. Man, it was there for 57 years. Yeah. And uh, it had been deteriorating badly. But on that same day that it collapsed, man, China um, had, a, had a step in, a, in another direction that I really hope that the U.S. kind of kind of gets back on, on track with that. But um, it uh, had an unmanned uh, craft uh, probe. Um, it's called the Changes 5 probe. It landed on the moon to bring lunar materials back to Earth for the first time in almost 50 years. Um, it will be the first time a country has acquired samples from the moon since the Soviet's, Soviet Union's Luna 24 mission in 1976. Put that in perspective, man. That's 40... You're, God, that's a long time ago, man. Well, um, wow. This is, this is definitely a December to remember. It is a December to remember, so, my friend. But uh, can I conspiracy theory this for you for a second? Sure, you can. There, I know what they're putting up there. I mean, it's the obvious one. It's right there in the headlines. But uh, you know, can that telescope see the surface of the moon? Yeah. So basically, it would be able to offer proof that they actually set foot on the moon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how convenient then that the telescope just broke down on the same day. Ooh, I think you're, can, man, can I'm we just, get like, I'm just fanning the flames, man. I just can't help myself. Yeah, no, no. I like your, I like where you're going with that. That's a, that's a thought. I mean, um, but do you think if they, if they did make it, you think that they're planning anything else up there, man? Maybe a little. Oh, I'd go uh, total lunar base, uh, you know, missile defense system. And, uh, I mean, why not just annex it? Right. Like. There aren't any international rules on who can claim the moon, right? Like, if you right. set up shop right. and you defend your fortress, then it's, you know, uh, you know, occupancy squatters rights, I guess, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. So, to put this in perspective of where the U.S. is versus China in, the, in that regard of, of, you know, more uh, research and observations of, of our lunar uh, neighbor— um, our neighbor. Um, there's a lot of roadblocks blocks for the U.S. Uh, to go back to the moon. Um, the cost of space exploration and the, the shifting of the budgets and priorities with each new presidential administration causes little ripples. Yeah. And not everybody is just as, you know, hot on bringing NASA back. You know, we got Space Force now and all this stuff that was, was out there, which... I mean, I'm kind of excited about it. I, I want a uniform. I want a hat. I want a Space Force yeah. hat. But China's lunar program began roughly a decade ago uh, with a $180 million investment, or equal to $180 million. Um, it had order, orbiter launches in 07 and 08. Um, wow, this is what is staggering to me. While the U.S. still spent the most on space exploration, up through 2019 from so you know say 2005 and through 2019 china's spending has increased by 349 well, percent over the last 15 15 now, uh, years this is completely ai unmanned uh yeah. you know a fully automated space trip right there just to point that out there were no humans on board that's right it's unmanned craft it's a probe that's right. It is an unmanned craft probe, whatever you want to call it. Um, God, probe it. I just get nervous. Do you think I hear that, that? Yeah. Do you think that telescope, like, is it like cable TV where you know when the connect when the cable starts to get disconnected, um, the signal gets a little fuzzy and snowy? Is it is it like the the spacecraft over time started to, uh, you know, the si- I'm, I'm sorry, the spacecraft, the uh, the telescope over time started to get a little bit blurrier and blurrier. Is that? Do you think that's? Am I just like? Is that two Simpsons <laughs> of a of a plot? No, no, I like it. I like it. No, 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 no. That, that's good. That's good. Um, <laughs> oh man, speaking of space exploration, and 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 I'll let you go with this last one before we lead into the main main story. 
um, we would not have gotten uh, to the moon or even broken the sound barrier without a specific individual key. Why don't you talk a little bit about one of your favorite people and mine? The right stuff. Hey, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, this This kind of is, is one of those... Um, Mandela effect situations where, and by the way, you know, if you go check out our podcast on the Mandela effect, I think we did a video on that as well. If you haven't watched it already and you'll understand what we're referring to there, but you know, he, he was 97. Chuck Yeager was 97 when he passed away. Right. Um, and he's one of those guys where in, in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, I thought he, I thought he, I didn't know he was still alive, you know, kind of thought maybe. Right. 97 years old, uh, tough as nails. Um, I remember he later in life just became kind of the spokesman for man stuff, you know, outdoorsy. Yeah. How Chuck oh, Yeager man, he, cooks uh, on an open dude, campfire, right? I mean, he's he's the reason why I wanted to join the Air Force, man. I mean, fastest man on, you know, broke the sound barrier. So you have seen in the Smithsonian the Bell X One. Remember, it was orange. So now you know that was dropped out of a bomber mm -hmm. while they were flying. And launched to break the sound barrier. Yep. Uh, you want to talk amazing. about a, a risky takeoff? That was that was it. We would not have achieved a number of the things that we have achieved in just aviation. Period. But the space program um, and a number of other things involved around the space program um, had it not been for some of the. Um, chances that this mm -hmm. guy took and i mean you think about that i mean this is this guy broke the sound barrier and something that nobody had ever gotten in before i mean he just i'm going in man this is this is this is what i'm doing for humanity and the contributions that he did uh that he 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 gave or made for um uh, this for humanity period and in, in, in breaking the sound barrier uh was was huge and um it will forever resonate uh throughout aviation um and space yeah uh, programs he, he, he from here was to one of those be... larger than life um characters for sure and he's just, just a just a good guy you know just a good dude you it know? just and seemed so, like when you I, I remember like every now and then i'd see him on tv or i'd see him on a commercial and he just seemed like you know just mr all-american kind of thing you know right on right on so let's talk google let's talk a little google what's uh let's talk a little google here pal all right, so this has been a very, 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 I'm going to throw one more very in there, hot and heavy news topic. Live. Uh, over the past couple of weeks. And I, I just want to bring it up because there's an angle to this that I think maybe some people aren't considering. And, and, and so that's where I think we might be able to, you know, add our own flavor to this. So... We've all probably heard or seen the headlines. A few weeks back, Google uh, terminated one of their head ethical researchers in their AI division. Right. Right. So she AI was. AI folks, if you're not paying attention we, or sleeping, yeah. artificial intelligence. And we, we talk, talk about, about it all the, the time. And we've talked about this on the program all the time. And essentially, as I understand it, part of her responsibilities were to make sure that we don't end up in a Terminator Skynet situation, that we're not using AI for the wrong reasons, right? And um, the thing yeah. about the firing that was interesting to me was, and Google executives have commented on it, that mm -hmm. what we know from both sides, from, from her side and from Google, um, it wasn't a performance review type situation where, you know, she's not pulling her weight. She's not doing her job. They've had, they've had sit downs with her before and they're just not getting, produ you know, in, in other words, poor, poor work performance. Right. It was more actually of her work in the industry. Right. That got her fired. And so she wrote a paper and, Google required that their employees, when you do stuff like that, if you're going to publish it outside of Google, that Google requires you to let them approve it before you're allowed to release it. 
Right. And they weren't real happy with the, some of the things that she has to say. And so here's the part that I wanted to draw attention to. Um, you know, Google started this whole endeavor with, uh, you know, their mantra of don't be evil. Right. M- mm. Remember that, Jay? I do. Yeah. Hey, now I just want to remind you that you have your hands on mission control there, and this is where all the recording is happening, so be careful. I, I see what you're doing there. We'll, okay. Um, <laughs> if you crash the show, you'll you'll never be invited back. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you not watching this video and you're just listening out there in, in uh, radio land uh, or podcast uh, earbud land, um, we have a mission control back there, and I'm telling you right now that side shot, <laughs> Knows how to use the uh, controls yeah, of the a, mission. He's all over my MacBook Pro. So, so back to <laughs> back to. So, interestingly enough, someone that's working for the ethical behavior does something against the big machine, if you will, that they don't deem appropriate to their current pathway. Correct. And they're not really saying much about what that disagreement particularly was. But it really feels to me, and this is just my opinion, okay, but it kind of feels to me like in our current era, Google could care less about not being evil, about your privacy, about not letting their equipment take over the world. And right. maybe I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but they certainly don't seem to have the sensitivity to that that the company announced that they had when they first started yeah and you know she look she had recently been working on a paper like like we said in the beginning of this art article but it was examining the risk of developing computer systems that analyze huge databases of human language and use that to create their own human-like text mm-hmm. um the Machine paper learning yeah Right, exactly. The paper, uh, which was a copy, is it shown to the Associated Press, they said, it mentions Google's own new technology used in its search business as well as those developed by others. Now, this is the stuff that Keith and I have been talking about all the time. This is the unethical practices that I'm sure that she probably brought up was that, you know, you can't have, you can't do this. Well, um, let me... Let me give you a real world. Yep, go. What you got? Um, so it's kind of creepy. I'm not gonna use it. What? You that, hold, hold it. I know my mom is like she's talking like to her phone or something, or she just says like, "Ooh, I want a new like purse or something." Yeah. And then she'll get on like Facebook an hour later, and there's like. An ad. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. So we had a we had a pretty serious uh, security breach, actually two over the past week. One was FireEye, which is a big uh, government contractor. Huge man. Their job basically is in cybersecurity. And then Somebody's getting fired. The U.S. Treasury, uh, SolarWinds, which is a if you're not familiar with SolarWinds, it's a platform management product that it's really network management tools server management uh uh firewall management that kind of stuff they got hacked oh we're not talking uh we're not talking northern lights no no so so (laughs) then the treasury department gets gets breached and you know people are thinking well they probably had accounts with these guys and that data probably came out um and so the 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 concern here is uh, okay so here I, i'll give you a real world example but i'm going to remove the names of the innocent to protect them okay <laughs> I, i'm talking yeah. with my peers and a lot of these guys are super sharp technology it people and we're talking about this breach and we're talking about what happened and why it happened and potential reasons and one of them goes hey um, and we're using a Google chat platform to have this discussion, okay? Right. And one of my peers goes, uh, let's take this somewhere else. I'm really not comfortable having this conversation here on a Google product. Now, now, what does that say to you? People in the know, Jay, people that know 
technology, people that work mm-hmm. in information technology, and one of them says, just just talking about security breaches, and they say, yeah, let's not let's not continue this this conversation on a Google service. I, I just don't trust right. them. I have had similar conversations with my son, my oldest son, you know him, um, that I heed his warnings. Yeah. He w- will be talking about certain things, and he'll say, I wouldn't do that, Dad. Yeah. You know, and, and you and I have had those types of conversations. So I definitely pay attention to my friends that are in the uh, information technology world um, when it comes to this sort of stuff. Uh, we are in a time where there is really not too much sacred anymore, if you will. Right. Your privacy, that is. Right. And you have to be very careful. And I went through the process, of, you know, I just bought a new MacBook Pro. And going through the process of setting this thing up, you really have to pay attention to what you're clicking on, man, because next thing you know, you've signed up for allowing them to see every single word you say. Right. Type. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have Siri on it, but I don't use it. Right. I, I disabled Siri. I don't want it on there. I don't need it on there. So Sideshot just mentioned that, um, and this will tie into our main headline for the podcast, you know, Google has reportedly rumored to be working on AI cars for years, right? What do you know about, you know any more than that? Any details? Um, so they've been working on it, I think, just over 10 years. They, I don't know when they came up with the name. Uh, they call it Waymo. Waymo, yeah. And it's really cool. And it's worth a lot of a podcast. Well, and and we maybe need to look into that, Jay. So um, let's do that. You know, this is the thing. Like, you know, they were the first one to attach technology to cars, drive around, and map the whole Earth, right? I mean, right. There you go. So but that's it. Some of this is helpful, I think. And we've had that. So so as let's just kind of get into this a little bit. So we watched a video where automotive manufacturers are putting AI safety measures in their vehicles now. Mm-hmm. And some of that's good. You know, I've had kids in my neighborhood that we've talked about that we know don't look before they cross the street. I've, we've seen some of them just run out in front of cars, right? So putting safety equipment in cars to help in those situations, it, it, it can be a good thing. Now, I tend to like to do my own driving. I'm not a huge fan of letting the car drive for me in all instances. But... I think that there are some nice features that potentially could save lives going on right now that are a result of ethical AI, ethical use of AI. Correct. Now, you watched. Okay, so so this video. Um, you want to you want to set up what we saw yeah. in this video? Yes. So so basically, guys, um, you the the what is it NTS. Uh, NHTSA, th- their whole sole purpose on this planet is to make sure that auto manufacturers are adhering to the latest safety guidelines, that sort of stuff. Um, and they're also they 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 grade these manufacturers, you know, like front collisions, rear collisions, side collisions, airbag deployment, you name it, all these things. But now we have moved into even more and more higher technology um you know like ai type technologies and the video was a demonstration of what they call um pedestrian automatic emergency braking and it's the insurance institute for highway safety so it's kind of an independent test meaning you know honda's not sponsoring it or uh ford's not sponsoring it or whatever um i gotta say jay and we'll link to this video but Yep. Some of this stuff is just downright entertaining and hilarious. Well, it was, it, I mean, it was right? man. Um, you know the uh, you know a lot of dummies involved, um, right? In this in this one, but surprisingly, I guess it was surprising. Maybe not so surprising, but Ford, Ford just absolutely just blue chunk failed. So I mean, one of the ones that did really well that I didn't expect to do well was Nissan. Was it the Maxima? 
Is that right? <laughs> yes, the Nissan Maxima performed very well. Um, Audi um, did well. Um, the yep. Mercedes uh, did well. Subaru passed the test. Yeah. Um, however, you oh, could tell that their onboard systems was a little different than, say, Audi and Mercedes, which I get. Yeah, so what they did was they, they took um, simulated scenarios where they have a fake right. human being, a, a mannequin. They're, they're, they're motorized. They're, they're moving, right? Right. And they had like a couple lanes, and they would have cars parked on the side of the road, and they would have the mannequin walk out kind of in a blind spot there where they're coming out in front of the cars as the test vehicle is moving at them at you know 30 40 miles an hour and it's emergency right. braking 25 miles an hour on this maxima right. and then they get into the whole thing where there's uh there's a which, which one was it so so they do a pretty good job in a simulated crosswalk environment and they right. all do a fairly decent job there but then when they do the one where it's like a child running out without like checking um, right. My favorite was oh, what was that? <laughs> what was that that just ran? That was either the that was either the that that's a Honda. That person's dead. <laughs> oh no! Wait a minute. That was a Honda. Was that a Ford? Yeah. That Actually, was, was that Ford. that was either a Ford that or a Hyundai? Fusion. That was the Ford Fusion. Oh, the Ford and the Fusion. Korean okay. manufacturers. The thing, about it, the thing about it is coming up. They let you see it hits the person. Yeah. And then about a second or two later, it breaks. Oh, it's awesome! And then and the then, legs go under the car. And <laughs> it keeps rolling over. Them. And like it hits the person, and it, right as it hits the person, it starts oh, to break. Oh, that's fantastic! Oh, we detected something on your hood. We'll apply the brakes now. Oh, and the body's right. flying so, through the air. That's awesome. Right. So, so there, you know, that that bears some conversation, which is, you've got. This technology that they're they're testing for, but there's also the um, the AEB, which is just automatic emergency braking, which is more of a frontal col- front yeah. collision to kind of detect the front collision. So it's not as advanced as this newer technology, right? And that's where AI is coming in, and that's why we wanted to have this conversation. What's, a, what's real? What's not? What's worthy of applying the brakes? What's a threat? What isn't? Right? All of that's machine learning. You know, it, interestingly enough. A couple of the uh, Korean manufacturers, Hyundai and uh, Kia, both just just, just failed. Blew right Completely over. Completely failed. It was Ford, awesome. We looked at each other and I went, "Well, they don't even they, they they don't care. They're not putting any R and D into this at all." Right. Yeah. The ones that passed the test were Audi, uh, Mercedes, Nissan, and Subaru, and these were all tests that done at around anywhere between twenty five and thirty five miles an hour. Right. Neighborhood and, neighborhood speeds. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. And and each one of these these um, technologies, and, and again, this is where we're at. It's everybody racing to the finish line to come up with the best technology suitable. It appears to me that, that the Europeans have got it figured out. Well, and you know, on the one hand, we look at this and we go, well, this is great. I love these safety features. You know, it's yet another reason to have a Subaru or... You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, an, an, an Audi or even the Nissan. Again, you know, that Nissan, yeah, plenty of distance. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, what am I giving up for this? What that that yeah. that thing that Nissan talked about in the Z car, that that connection between man and machine, right. right? You are one with the car. Well, not anymore in this situation. That car has taken over. And what That's was right. that? <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that was yeah. the Kia. Often. I think that was the Kia, yeah. And there's not... So, here's what's interesting to me about that. There's no hidden... There's no cars parked on the side of the road in that case. It is a straight no. up... Straight clearly up. Clearly visible pedestrian about to right. cross the road. And that thing just... Does, it never even stops after it makes contact. That's right. That's exactly right. And, you know, see, this is the thing where... That's where the standardization has to come into play too, and we're just not quite there with the AI on this stuff. And and um, you know, Keith, when Keith and I started talking about this before we podcasted, we were having a conversation, and, and my thought on it is: Have we really become that distracted um, in our vehicles to to the point to where we can't? Um, you know, pay attention to the side of the road or what's well, going on. I understand there are certain certain circumstances that even the best AI is not even going to detect That's a it. really good point. Now, you have someone here, this is an interesting perspective, because on the one hand, at 10 years old, I would say, 
his entire life, all he has known is vehicles that have some level of uh, electronic yeah, integration. Although, yeah, yeah. Dad's got an FJ Cruiser. It's pretty bare bones. There's no big screens in there or anything, right? So you do know what it's like. And, and I've got a Ford V10 pickup that's pretty bare bones, too. Look at the face he's making. But <laughs> any time that you put a big screen, a 10-inch screen in your Bronco or your Hummer EV or your Tesla with a big, giant laptop-looking screen, whether or not you are texting on your phone, whether or not you are trying to practice safe driving, there is still the potential because that screen is there. If it alerts you that it sees a pedestrian, if it alerts you that you have an incoming message or a call or that you're almost out of fuel or whatever, right? Or that you have low right. tire pressure. That is still a distraction that you did not have with vehicles in previous generations. Whether or not you're using your phone to text, you are right. still being exposed to more distractions with the advent of AI in these vehicles. That's exactly right. It's it's kind of it's be careful what you ask for because right. it's kind of it, it's 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 putting you in predicaments that you're not used to. You know, I mean, it used to be a couple pedals, man. Yeah. Um, a gear shift and a and, and a steering wheel, man. And you might have had a couple knobs for the radio and and yeah. to 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 roll your window down, you had to crank. You know, I yeah. mean, it's all of these modern conveniences. I they they've dumbed us down. Well, have they really? Way, du- have they dumbed us down? Yeah, I literally. Saw are a we commercial. really? Are we becoming the crash test dummies? That's are really, we becoming we the are dummies? The product. We are the consumable product. There. So in a way. Uh, I, I saw a commercial last week. I don't remember who it was for, so I'm not going to name any manufacturer names. But it started like this. It was a lady, and she goes, parallel parking can be so stressful sometimes. And she talked, and it, it, that's a valid point. You know, they're in a busy city. <laughs> People behind you maybe don't know you're trying to parallel park. You know, I, we've all had it happen. I've had it in my hometown here where sure. I put my turn signal on, I stop, the guy's right on my tail, and I try to back in, and he's he's blocked me. So what I've had to learn to do is compensate for that. I stop early, completely, put my turn signal on, look over there in a pronounced way, then I pull forward and back up so that I've communicated to them in a you know as clear as possible. Hey man, yeah, you know. But if you don't know how to parallel park, I mean that's still on the driver's test, is it not? I mean, yeah, pretty much. Should you really? Do you have business operating a vehicle that can be a lethal weapon if you're not capable of parallel parking that vehicle? I, right. I don't know, man. I just feel like, in a way, we've had to introduce all these safety measures because we've introduced all these complications to the driving uh, right. platform. Well, all of this AI, the Alexa, Siri, all these things, you know, we talked about this the other day with the sidewalk thing with with Amazon, right? It's Amazon sidewalk, you know what it is? Mm-hmm. or Yeah. Hey, hang on. Side shot, do not be clicking likes under dad's account. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on what you're looking at. Yeah, well. But, um, yeah. but so. Distraction. Well, it could be the. See? Distraction, yeah. Um, but, see, and I'm, I'm completely derailed now. That's, that's what we're here for, man. Derailer. Derailer. Um, but, no, all, all of this. All of this stuff, man. All of this it, it, is it going to be like in ten years, Keith? Are we going to hit 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 a button, or or just say, or not even hit a button, and just say, "Hey, uh, pick me up in five minutes. I'm ready to go to the office." I do. And think then all of a sudden, this vehicle, yeah, this vehicle comes up and pulls in front of my house. You get in, stop by, so and so coffee to go. The case will then be the made office. that. They have they have data now, and it's safer to let the AI do it for you, and they'll phase it in, right? So if you're over a certain age or you've already got your driver's license or whatever, but then after a certain point, we will be in a world where your ability to take over control from those machines, I think, will be reduced. Absolutely, and it'll be it in will certain be. areas. So you know the um, remember in Vegas, right, where we experienced that they've got the self driving. Uh, yeah, like Ubers what was it, or Lyfts or yeah, it was whatever. Ubers. Yeah. yeah, it was Ubers. And they had rules in that area where they could only engage the self-driving feature out on the strip, meaning they couldn't do it in pulling in and out of the hotels, in the casinos. 
That right. They were not allowed to do that. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of congregating. But once they were out in with traffic light signals and on the strip, they could engage it. So they had human drivers. I see that right. scenario being reversed in 10 years. I see it being the human will only be allowed to take over at, at certain l- lower risk areas. Right. I have someone in our family that just, they leased it. They didn't purchase it. It was an Acura. I forget the um, the exact model. one of their SUVs. Uh, well, it's that has it probably an MDX or an RDX. Probably, probably I think it was... I think it was an MDX, but um, but it had that that lane keep, yeah, technology, and they were showing me several occasions how it worked, you know, and I I mean I knew how it worked, but they were mainly showing me how it doesn't work. Yeah, they're scared to death of it. They won't use it. They don't. They don't. They're yeah, not letting the it take control. it's the same on our seventeen Lexus. It's uh, we we've tested that where I've taken my hands off the wheel and it's like ah oh, we're going in the ditch and I have to you so, know. Yeah, you try to test that on like the twisty roads and St. George Island. We're it's, mailboxing it, right? Yeah, it's well. First of all, it's not made for that, and also, um, I think like two years ago, we two three, maybe it was three. I don't know. Um, and we were on a trip to Hilton Head Island with my mom's friend and her son and she every year she rents out like a new car and that year she had gotten a tahoe and i i kept seeing that it would like the steering wheel would move when she went and i told her about it and she was like wow that's cool so we tested it and it okay so it would start to go just ever so slightly the left and then it would correct it but then it would go to the right it and it would correct yeah. it and then it would get like really bad you really and I was they do my sort of simulate a drunk driver i i've noticed that the the ai doesn't really do any better than an inebriated human and and you know driving <laughs> yeah. steady down the center of the lane so could you effectively get pulled over and go, I, I, I wasn't well, driving, man. it's probably coming to that. I mean, you know, an, I, I an wasn't driving, man. Go, uh, I observed, the, uh, you know, erratic. Yeah, but it's it's on autopilot. It wasn't me, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I gave up my keys to the car. I'm sorry. I, All right. So <laughs> while we got you talking and then we'll wrap the show up here, um, this whole thing that we've been talking about with the safety and the, and, and, uh, the AI integrations in cars, are you a fan for where that's heading? And here's why I'm asking, because you need to think about it like this. In in five to six years, you may have a driver's license if you continue good behavior. If you do not, it may be another 10 or 15 years. Um, <laughs> but by the time you're 25, you could potentially go out and buy your first new car or whatever. Maybe you get one before then. By the time you're 25, you may be left with no options on a dealer lot other than full AI mode and you may not actually be able to finger quotes here drive a car how does that what do you think about that are you good with this what would you like to see happen so I I think it is super cool that cars are able to do this Mm -hmm. but I really don't like the idea that you're not allowed to drive like maybe if if there's these really risky areas and the car knows that like there have been a lot of crashes there i might be okay with it like not letting me do that yeah but i would definitely like to drive it Ooh. but i think it's still i think it's still a cool idea to have that because again like that's another advancement in technology well and you know this is somebody I, that and he, i've got something to add to what he just said which yeah. is another piece of technology and i don't know that there's any out there i mean we have the ability to have this and and if i've missed this technology then then show me being under a rock but he just mentioned something like if if a specific part of a highway is risky to drive on yeah Right then, then maybe the, you let the AI well take over or not take over. So, but that made me think. Well, wouldn't that be cool to have an onboard um, 
AI let you know that the area that you're about to drive through, be on high alert. There have been numerous accidents on this stretch road just in the past month. So we're going to call that the Kenny Loggins alert? (laughs) You know why? Why, man? Well, if you're going to go through the danger zone. Oh, man. Yes. So danger, danger. But in that, I mean, yeah, I mean, but again, you're making my case that before too long, it becomes you're only allowed as the human to drive in these certain areas that we deem less risky. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, just something to think about, you know, and he's he's done driving where we'll go to these, you know, racetracks and they drive the go karts and. You know, sure. he, he always gets bent out of shape when it's the one that you got to be 16 or older or have a driver's license. They won't let him do it. But uh, right, remember when we were kids and Dad put you on his lap and uh, you know let you let you drive, hold the wheel, and oh man, all the time. His mother. I mean, I was his mother. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I have video of this on my phone. I'm not saying I don't have video of this on my phone. I'm just saying it may come out one day if I need it. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> So uh, we are, it looks like we're running out of time here. Do we you, are. Do you, so we uh, should tell everybody where they can find us, huh? And and maybe it might be worth bringing up uh, those. Do you have those hats handy again? The I do. I do. Don't forget, folks, this is the December to remember. Right here, guys. If you're interested, you need to reach out to us on our website. Contact us, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. These are 25 apiece. We have trucker hat, baseball hat. Those are 27 each. Uh, if you want a hoodie, those are around 45. We'll see what we can work out there for you as well. But we're just testing the waters with it, so reach out to us there. Uh, we also uh, have a video out. We, we just re- released a video on gifts for gearheads. Um, there's quite a few things there, uh, specifically one, which is the fixed uh, sensor, which reads your, uh, your codes through your OBD2 port. Uh, we have a link on our website as well as in that particular video over on YouTube uh, where you can click on that link and you can go purchase that. And it's a sale for our audience right now, which is really awesome. It's $19.99 for that thing right now. Those things when they first came out were around 80 bucks a piece or something. But anyway, right now is the time to get your hands on those. So speaking of YouTube.com, you can check out video segments of this podcast. You can check out some of our DIY videos and many, many other videos over on YouTube.com forward slash Parts Counter Gurus. Uh, you can check us out on social media. Uh, if you want to follow us, we'd love to have you follow us. You go to facebook.com forward slash parts counter gurus. Uh, give us a thumbs up, like us, uh, share. Um, go over to instagram.com forward slash the parts counter gurus. Same thing there, guys. Uh, check us out on Twitter. And on Twitter, we are at the counter show. Um, if you like, if you please download our podcast and, and just just become a fan, um, go to partscountergurus.com. There is a tab for podcast links. Click on the link. Look at that coaster. That's a nice one. Um, you can uh, buy anything that we mention on the podcast. There's a mention on the podcast uh, tab there. You can find those links. Or if you just want to shop, finish out your Christmas shopping or whatever shopping you prefer. Maybe you're out of toilet paper. I know a lot of people must be because I can't find any right now. Um, go through our website and click on the Amazon link. You can, if you purchase through there, uh, it helps us out. We get a little love. We don't know what you're buying. We can't. We don't know who you are, but it helps us continue to do these shows. So, please, YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell, follow us on every podcast, follow us on everything, everything, man. Thank you so much for uh, being in our audience. And uh, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. So, thanks again for everything. All right. So we worked out a little plan here. Side shot's going to contribute here. Now, here's how we're going to do awesome. this. All right, let me set this up. I'm going to say a couple words in closing, and then I'm going to flip this up, okay? And then you can do. Say, and then you can do your thing. All right. Just like he said, go subscribe. There you go. There you go. go. Okay. And All right. So here we go. You ready? <laughs> you, it's we're 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 doing it live. You got one take. All right. Again, everybody, thank you so much. It's been a great year. We appreciate it. We, we sincerely could not have done this without your continued support. Thank you all. Uh, Jay, thank you for st- sticking with us here. 
uh, thank you guys guest, guest sit in and all thank you side shot always fun to have you on uh so until next time everybody that is jay way over there uh side shot right here to my left you're right i am keith until next time may all your favorite bands stay together remember just like you said partscountergurus.com make sure to go subscribe